the Federal Department of Education has uh, gone about its effort to rewrite Title IX, and it's, it's having a very devastating effect. It's something that is of great alarm to all of us because it's a harm and it could be a great harm to, to women and girls, and especially in athletics and all these other arenas. Turning now to the Biden administration's rewrite of Title IX, which takes effect on August 1st. You just heard House Speaker Mike Johnson say how dangerous these rewrites are, and many Americans feel the same. At least 15 states have challenged the new Board of Education regulations. Title IX is a federal law enacted more than 50 years ago in 1972 that prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex in education programs and activities. Women faced exclusion from some colleges, universities, more frequent tenure denials than men, just to name a few. The law also aims to protect women from sexual harassment. The Biden administration changed the language of Title IX from protecting women from sex discrimination to make it about so-called gender identity. The changes would open girls' bathrooms and locker rooms to allow boys who identify as girls to use their facilities. The Biden administration and many LGBTQ plus advocates say it's all about supporting the transgender community. Anything that we can do that says that to folks that they belong, that they are, have an equal right to this space or community. While LGBTQ advocates say inclusion is the goal of the Title IX changes, there are many who say they don't feel safe having a man in a woman's locker room. The new guidelines don't stop there. They also attack freedom of speech. The new wording would require teachers to use someone's preferred pronouns, therefore compelling speech. And for girls who say they're uncomfortable having a man in her locker room, well, that can be deemed as discriminatory. The controversial changes have sparked legal disputes in states across the country. Some 26 states are challenging Title IX regulation changes. Those are highlighted here in red and blue. Those in red are states where Title IX changes are currently on hold. On Monday, the Department of Justice asked the Supreme Court to intervene in those disputed states. The new rule will not take effect in all 50 states due to these lawsuits. We're joined now by Michelle Exner, Senior Advisor at Parents Defending Education, to dive into these changes. Michelle, welcome to the show. Speaker Mike Johnson talked about how dangerous these Title IX changes are. What is the practical impact and what do these legal challenges look like? You know, absolutely. So the impact is, is jarring, frankly, for women and females across the country. And as a mom of a, a, a 10 year old little girl who plays sports, um, like I'm infuriated by this. Um, so the impact, um, just like was summarized in the segment here. So one, and I think the most glaring is the, the, the fact that it now it now opens up female sports and spaces to biological males, right? We're talking about locker rooms. We're talking about sports fields. We're talking about overnight lodging if there goes on field trip. Um, and also a, a second portion of this is, is free speech, right? Now we're compelling individuals, Americans, um, to compel their speech. Um, and this is a violation of their uh, constitutional rights. Um, and also, lastly, um, something that I don't think is as mentioned is the fact that this um, it also impacts due, due process, right? Um, you know, as Americans, we, we are owed these rights. And with the Biden's Title IX, Biden and Vice President Harris's rewrite of this, it now impacts that for students as well. And when we look at these challenges, what is it that's being challenged? How are these states hoping to uh, stop these changes? Absolutely. And so we have seen a litigation um, across the country as soon as this was filed and parents defending education was proud to to be involved in one of those legal um, efforts. Um, right now, our lawsuit is ongoing. We filed that with uh, alongside Speech First and the Independent Women's Forum. And so that is still ongoing. We're waiting to see um, the, the results of that. Um, so it, it just it's it, the legal cases are talking about how this is unfairly impact impact women uh, and girls in these states. And so um, what we've seen, we've seen injunctions filed in several of those lawsuits already. And what that means is that in those particular states and universities impacted, um, they will not have to implement a title, Biden's Title IX rewrite until these legal until these legal action has, has followed through their course, which is good news for the families um, and parents and girls, especially in those states. So that's good news there. Um, and we, you know, we hope that it continues to move in that in that right direction. It is good news, but the funding still hangs in the balance, especially since these are federal funds. So congressional and presidential elections really matter here. Let's go to the Olympics. They're starting. Everyone has sports on their minds. Would these changes in Title IX affect collegiate sports as well? 
You know, it'll, it, it, yes, it's both anywhere that federal funding flows to those academic uh, institutions, Title IX impacts. And so absolutely, when we're thinking about those collegiate athletes at these schools um, and who they're pulling from and who gets to place in first, second, third, right? Um, and who gets to stand on those podium, who gets to keep those those records, um, that that is impacted, right? Um, we've seen one particular example, an athlete in West Virginia, right, where there's a lawsuit ongoing. This, this male, biological male, has beat uh, female track athletes 700 different times, right? And this is just one case of many. Uh, this is science, this is indisputable, that it is unfair to women and girls. And I think you see, you need to see no further than you don't see this on the other, on the other side, right? There are no, where are the stories of the, of the biological females that are clamoring to go and compete in, in male sports? Perhaps I've missed them, but I just don't see them. And I think that is clear evidence of why this Title IX rewrite by the Biden and Harris administration is completely sexist and against girls and females. Now, you mentioned you're a mom yourself. What recourse do these parents and girls have if their local representatives have not sued? You're part of a lawsuit, but what about those who don't have access to that? Absolutely. And so I think with, you know, school is going to be starting up here in the next couple of weeks. And I think parents should call up their school districts and ask, how how is this going to impact my school? Right. How will this violate the security and safety that that my female daughter should should be able should be able to expect in schools and for parents to be able to expect? So call them and demand answers. Um, and there's there's courses, you know, find allies in the community that are willing to stand with you uh, and, and just, you know, take a stand against it. Let make sure that they know, they hear your voices, and I know that there's people in the community. Um, because at the end of the day, the polling clearly shows that this is decision is completely unpopular. There was a Gallup poll just a couple months ago that says 70 plus percent of Americans believe that uh, female athletes should be playing on female sports teams um, and biological males should not should not be playing on female sports teams. And so the fact that the Biden Harris administration did, did that is really a slap in the face to female girls and their parents out there. So I encourage all of the parents um, to know that there's people like parents like or in organizations like Parents Defending Education out there fighting for them, um, but also stand up in your community and and and, and make sure to have their voices heard. Well, I'm sure that you have more resources online, parents defending education. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thanks for having me.